Okay, so we're gonna start now. We have a 32 year old male, right? With history of Crohn's disease. They came to the hospital with severe diarrhea and abdominal pain. He appears to be lethargic and his blood pressure is 75 to 5. What interdisciplinary team should be involved in this patient's care? A gastroenterologist b dietitian c physical therapist d social worker and e pharmacist and it's a select order apply so they have Crohn's disease right so we do know for sure they do need a gastroenterologist right because that's what is essential for managing such disease do they need a dietitian absolutely they do do they need a physical therapist not not right now a physical therapist has little or nothing to do with their, their acute problem at this point in time would they need a social worker yes this is a person that will help coordinate care and provide support and would they be needing pharmacists absolutely right so this is more of med surgery question if i may say so i'm pretty sure we have nurses on here if you were to have a patient on your unit that has this disease these are the people that for sure will be on the team to care for them i'm gonna pull up your rationale An 85-year-old female patient with advanced dementia is admitted with dehydration. Family is divided on whether to initiate aggressive treatment or focus on comfort care. What is your nurse role in this situation? Advocate for the patient's best interest and facilitate communication between family members. Be the side on the treatment plan for the patient. Like, you know what? I'm the nurse. I'm just going to tell you what to do. <laughs> See? Support the decisions for the majority of the family. D, encourage the family member to initiate aggressive treatment. He focused solely on providing comfort care. Hey, okay, so shall we move on to the next question? That's pretty straightforward, I wanna believe. Okay, let's go. In a simulation scenario, a nursing student is presented with a patient who has a serum calcium level of 7.0. This patient is experiencing muscle cramps, tingling in their hands and feet. Which of the following actions should the student nurse take first? Would you administer oral calcium supplement first? Would you prepare to administer IV calcium? Would you check the patient vitamin D level would you assess the patient for chivalistic and true true source signs? Would you encourage the patient to consume calcium? Would you monitor the patient's EKG for her rhythmia? Don't forget your heart pie. Eh, heart pie. Because <laughs> I see someone that said F. So the right answer is D. You want to always, always assess first. Remember, F says monitor. So if F had said place them on EKG, that could possibly come first, right? Depending on the other options that you have. So this patient has an issue, they're 40 years old, they have history of psychogenic poly this year, and they're admitted with a serum sodium level of 120, they have automated status. What would be your ethical consideration that you would take into account for caring for this patient? So A would say, would you respect the patient's autonomy while ensuring their safety? Would you restrict all fluid intake immediately? Would you allow the patient to drink water as she pleases? Would you ignore the patient's mental status? And would you focus Focus solely on correcting the sodium level. Okay, I think we are no is the right thing to do. You want to make sure that you respect your patient's autonomy and ensure their safety, even though they might be mentally altered at this point in time. When managing fluid and electrolyte imbalances in a geriatric patient, which of the following factors should the nurse consider? Reduced renal function, increased total body weight, altered thirst perception, high metabolic rate, use of medication that can affect fluid balance, increased risk of dehydration. So you're caring for a geriatric patient. What are the things that you take into consideration for managing their fluid and nitronite imbalances? Someone said A, reduce renal function as you should. C, altered thirst perception. Okay. Okay. I think we cannot agree that as we grow older, your obviously your total body water does decrease, right? So you, that wouldn't be something you put into consideration, right? C, alter test perception. Yes, that is very correct. Do older patients, do they have high metabolic rate or low? Low. So that's not a part of this answer option. That's incorrect. Okay. So just the med use of medication that can affect fluid balances. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And increased risks of dehydration. Yes. So your right answer for this question would be A, C, E, F. This is a long, long ass question. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit to read it. 
Okay, this is a delegation question. So you're on a med surge unit and you're caring for this patient, okay? So the first patient is a 70 year old, they have hyponatremia and they're on fluid restriction, right? Does that sound like a patient that's already taken care of? A patient that is 70 years old, they have hyponatremia and they are on fluid restriction, right? If this is like they're, they're stable. The second patient is 55 years old and they have hypokalemia and they're receiving oral potassium supplement as well. Now the top patient is 63 years old with CHF, hypervolumia and they are on diuretic and your fourth patient is 45 years old and they have hyponatremia and they're receiving hypertonic solution right which tax can you safely delegate to an lpn right and a monitor the fluid intake and output for the patient with hyponatremia b administer the hypertonic solution to the patient with hyponatremic right assessing the lung sound of the patient with congestive heart failure and d provide education on that potassium sources to the hypokalemic patient now could you guys tell me the things that you can and cannot delegate so in the context of this question the most appropriate thing for you to delegate will be fluid intake and out outtake right for them to record that you're working in the er and you have four patients right they all have electrolyte imbalances one patient has severe hyperkalemia with ekg changes right the second one has hypocalcemia with positive torso sign the third one has hypermagnesium with decreased deep tender reflexes and the fourth one has hypophosphate Phosphatemia <laughs> with muscle weaknesses, right? Which patient should you prioritize first? Why would you prioritize a patient with severe hyperkalemia over everybody else? Because of your heart. What was really hard? The add contractions. Okay. So you're on a cardiac floor and you're caring for a patient with hypervolumia due to heart failure, right? The patient requires frequent monitoring, diuretic administration, and education on fluid restriction. You also have other patients to attend to. Which tasks can you safely delegate to a nursing assistant? Administer the diuretic medication. B. Providing education on fluid restriction. C. Monitoring the patient's weight and vital signs. D. Assessing the patient's long sound. Easy one. Easy one. C. During a night shifts and this is me literally imagining this situation you're caring for multiple patients i see b i see c good job related to electrolyte imbalances at the same time one patient with hypercalcemia is experiencing confusion and decreased level of consciousness another patient with hyponatremia and is having seizures which patient should you attend to first your options goes number one the patient with hypercalcemia. B, the patient with hyponatremia. C, call the physician before I tell it to either of the patient. D, ask another nurse to attend to one of the one of the patient while you, you attend to the other one. The question says, which patient should you attend to first? That's the context of a question. So you have two patients. One is having seizures actively. The other one, they have hypercalcemia and experiencing confusion and decreased level of consciousness. Which one will you attend to first? Seizures. Your patient having seizures. Let me pull up your rationale. So you have a patient with chronic renal failure that risks for hyperphosphatemia. Which of the following dietary recommendations would the nurse provide? Limit your intake of dairy product. B. Increase consumption of oat grains. Avoid cola and other phosphate-containing soft drinks. I guess that's going to give it out, okay? Obviously, C is, is very obvious. D. Consume high-protein food like red meats. Red meats. E. Restrict food I in potassium. And F. Increase fluid intake to facilitate phosphate excretion now remember this patient has chronic renal failure okay i'm gonna help you out with this question so there's no reason why you would teach a patient with renal insufficiency to increase their fluid intake for any reason remember whenever you're reading your questions read in between the nine i need for you to understand why these answers are incorrect and why some are correct okay there's no reason why you would teach a patient to increase their fluid intake they already have 
chronic we're not doing that okay would you have them restrict foods high in potassium patient with chronic kidney failure or renal failure would you have them restrict foods high in potassium and why that's not the answer sign it's because of the i'm looking for someone to tell me because they have chronic kidney disease that means they have impaired renal excretion right so they will be yes they will be at risk for hypercalcemia no calamia sorry just because they already have that kidney problems going on okay so whenever you you have these questions and you're rationalizing why a or b or c or d might not be correct think of the context of the question okay so yes e is very much correct d what is d um consume high protein food like red meats is red meat high in phosphorus or not red meat this is why you need to know your nutrition okay even though red meat has some protein advantage it is very high in phosphorus as well so you wouldn't have them consume high protein foods like red meat okay maybe in moderation but not high you want to be very 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 careful with words like high low you know you just want to be careful of those words and whenever you're answering your question and c avoid cola and other phosphate containing food obviously increase consumption of all grain all grains definitely not so your right answer would be a c and e let me pull up your rationale a nurse is reviewing the lab result of a patient suspected of having hyperkalemia. Which of the following findings would support his diagnosis? Okay. The last question we had of a patient with chronic kidney disease and what food I'm just trying, I'm helping you put bit and pieces together, right? We had a question earlier on where we were trying to see what food would be best for a patient that has a kidney disease. And one of the food that we had on the answer option was food that in potassium we wouldn't recommend food that in potassium and the reason for that is because if you possibly have renal insufficiency when you have accumulated some potassium in your body reason being potassium are excreted via kidneys okay so if you are looking at a lab result of a patient that is suspected to have hypercalemia which in some cases it might be your patient that have missed their dialysis many they have some kidney problems going on it might be acute even one of the possible or most likely lab result would be their kidneys or let me say their kidney functions might be messed up because the only way you can have that much potassium in your body is because you can pee it out right you can't excrete it okay so just keep that in mind okay so obviously a serum potassium level of 5.5 that is obviously obviously i sodium level of 140 is this a normal sodium level or abnormal 140 now elevated bun kidney function right would you expect that with patient with hypercalcemia of kalemia elevated creatinine levels okay what was you guys this point a lot of you got two points Patient with DKA present with severe dehydration and hyperkalemia. Which pathophysiology mechanism are primarily responsible for hyperkalemia? Insulin deficiency leading to decreased cellular uptake of potassium. Osmotic diuresis causing potassium shift from intracellular to extracellular space. Acidosis causing hydrogen ions to exchange with potassium ions in cells. Increased aldosterone ad secretion promoting um, potassium excretion. Renal failure leading to impaired potassium excretion, excess intake of potassium rich food. Okay, this patient has DKA. A patient with DKA presents with severe dehydration and hyperkalemia. Which part of mechanism are primarily responsible for the hyperkalemia in this patient? Okay, I'm gonna pull up your rationale. And that's your rationale right there. You're a nurse. Amen. And you're reviewing the lab result of a patient suspected to have an hypercalcemia. Which of the following findings support this diagnosis? Calcium level of 1.2. B. Elevated PTH level. C. Decreased serum phosphorus level. D. Prolonged QT interval on EKG. E. Elevated serum creatinine level. F. Positive Shavostic sign. I'm gonna start from the bottom. F. Positive Shavostic sign, which is right here. 
what you got here by right. you tap gently on the cheek and the twitch right you get that twitch would that be a sign of ipo or hypercalcemia i mean if you have your study guy right with you i'm pretty sure it's ipo f is cancelled out does your serum creatinine level has anything to do with your calcium really i think that is more of potassium right okay so it is cancelled out d prolonged qt interval what would be the ekg abnormalities for your hyper this is an hyper an hypercalcemia for hypercalcemia it would be what it's right here it's right here so for your patient with hypercalcemia it will be cutely qt shortening and for ipo it will be cute QT prolongation okay so i put that in there to see if some of you guys did study like i asked you to so d is manifestation of ipole calcemia okay c is right there i have it all mapped out for you that way you're not confused this is why i said to study your nutrition as well okay everything is on your study guide all righty so we cancel that f we cancel that e and we canceled out D, right? C, obviously correct. We all know that. B, obviously correct. And A is an obvious correct option as well. Okay, I'm gonna pull up your rationale. Like, um, your patient has our failure, they are on fluid restriction, and you want to advise them to limit sodium intake. Which of the following foods should you advise them to avoid? Can soup, avoid or not? Avoid fresh fruits, processed meats, salted nuts, all grain bread, bottled water. So, your right answers are A, C, D, and E. A pediatric patient with gastroenteritis is showing signs of mild dehydration. Mild dehydration, mild okay. Like I say, whenever you read your questions, read it between the lines. Mild, right? Which of the following interventions should the nurse prioritize? Administer oral rehydration solution. B, studying an IV fluid infusion immediately. C, monitor urine output and specific gravity. You have to monitor your urine output to see how much your interventions are working out for the patient. D, encourage intake of solid water. E, checking mucous membrane and skin target. That is a good way to, for you to assess the level of dehydration. F, educate parents about signs of dehydration. Your answer is that is CEF. Okay, so you have a patient that has history of CHF and hypertension, right? They admitted for hyponatremia. Which of the following factors should a nurse consider in managing this patient? Hey, potential for overdiuresis with loop diuretic. So now remember, this patient also is admitted for hyponatremia. What solution would you use in correcting hyponatremia? In a patient with CHF, very carefully with close monitoring, what solution could you use to correct this hyponatremia? Hypertonic solution. So there's risk for fluid volume overload with sodium correction because you want to give them that fluid, but because they have they have history of CHF, yeah, there's a risk for that. So with close monitoring of high as an O, yes, there's, there's a very thin line. They could be, in fact, get overload. So there's a risk for fluid volume of a node with sodium correction. Okay. So for C, monitor for autostatic hypotension. This patient has history of hypertension. One of the side effects of some of these hypertension medication is autostatic hypertension, right? That means if you give your patient this medication and they get out of bed super fast, they could get an autostatic hypotension. So yes that is also something for you to manage so abc correct d adjusting anti-hypertensive medication yes because in this case this patient has chf they have hyponatremia they have hypertension there could be in fact in the hospital you see it a lot there'll be some changes to the anti-hypertensive medication because you know they might have to increase their dose for you know legs 
which might cause them to say, okay, let's take, let's decrease your dose for your amino the pain or for your whatever. Okay. So yes, there will be management or which of the factors should you, yeah, you want to consider, um, readjusting their hypertensive medication. Now, would you encourage your low sodium diet? Remember this patient has what? Hyponatremia. Hypo. Sodium already low. Okay. So no, we wouldn't recommend food high in potassium and assessing cognitive changes. Yes. We would assess their cognitive change because one of the, regardless of the level of sodium, right? Hypo and hyper. Sodium, so confused. Whenever whenever you hear anything sodium i remember from nursing school so confused so one of your classic sign of you know sodium imbalance is their cognitive changes right so in this contest a b c d f are your correct answers right a nurse is caring for a patient from cultural background that emphasizes natural remedies this patient is hesitant to receive iv fluid for severe dehydration which of the following actions should the nurse take respect the patient's cultural beliefs and explore alternative hydration method insist on medical necessity of iv fluid administration provide education on the benefit and risk of iv hydration collaborate with cultural mediator or interpreter if needed discuss the use of oral dehydration solution as alternative f monitor the patient's hydration status closely everything except b so if you have a patient that says no to anything it is not for you to force them a nurse is reviewing recent studies the management of hypomagnesium which of the following intervention are supported by current evidence-based practice administer oral magnesium supplement intravenous magnesium sulfate for severe cases c encourage dietary intake of magnesium rich food d routine use of magnesium based laxatives monitor serum magnesium level per supplement use calcium gluconate as your first now if anybody goes with f okay so abc absolutely so obviously or a magnesium supplement right to correct hypomagnesium iv in severe cases absolutely you also want to encourage food rich in magnesium monitor their level yes they want to do routine monitoring of their magnesium level so the right answer would be a b c and e